for a Board of Education meeting for August 10th, 2022. Roll call. Bad. Here. Sticky. Here. 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 111, please stand for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Item 1.2, uh, approval to accept the resignation of Board Member Charles Anderson. Motion. Second. Second. Discussion. I guess we'll take time now. This is, we have to accept it, but this is a huge disappointment. Charles has been on the board many, many, many years and has just brought a lot of wisdom and experience and knowledge to us as board members. We all were new under him at some point, and um, he will definitely be missed just with the knowledge and experience that he has brought, and um, just appreciate his passion that he's always had for Springboro, and he has always said that he, um, or he shared with us when he called us, that he still is just a phone call away, but it's just time for him um, to take a pause and just to take a step back and relax and enjoy his semi-retirement. So we will miss him, but um, excited for him for this next chapter, so, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I think it goes without saying that Mr. Anderson dedicated truly decades to our school district and has always been a um, staunch advocate for Spring Grove schools and especially our students. Um, and if there's anything that sticks with me about Charles, it was always his, um, consistent, you know, looking through the lens of, is this good for our kids? Um, that's how we pretty much phrased and, and um, looked through every question or every issue, and uh, you know, I think that's absolutely the right approach. So, um, yeah, it, it, on one hand, we're, um, it's, it's, you know, sad that he's not going to be here anymore, and uh, we're going to miss his wisdom and his thoughtfulness and his grace, but at the same time, if there's anybody that's earned a, a break and um, a rest from this, it's, it's Charles. So um, kudos and thanks to the man, years and years and years of dedication and service to this district. And um, yeah, thank you on, on my behalf. Yeah, I would echo what uh, Mrs. Babb and Mr. Good said. Um, I was going to actually say the exact same thing that, would, uh, that Mr. Good said that what stands out to me about Charles, what I will try to take with, uh, with me as we kind of continue. Um, it's just, you know, you always look at things through, through the lens of what's best for our kids. Um, you know, I can hear him saying that over and over again uh, as we were deliberating various uh, different, different uh, issues over the years. And so, uh, yeah, I too would just extend my, my sincere thanks to everything that Charles has given this school district and, and this board, and I will certainly miss his calming influence, uh, you know, his, his wisdom, he's just very even healed and we said he just, he always brought things back to what's best for our kids and I hope that we can continue to keep that focus as, as we move forward and so uh, bittersweet, obviously it's it's um, sad for us but I am happy that uh, Charles will uh, get to enjoy retirement uh, a little bit more and uh, so I appreciate all that he's done for our district and wish him nothing but the best for
Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we can move to item 1.3, adoption of the agenda for this evening. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion? Questions? Yes. 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 Okay. Item 1.4, approval of the July 13th, 2022 meeting minutes. It's an honor to be here to be able to recognize um, and honor our research students um, here this evening in a few minutes. Um, to get started, though, Mr. Martin High School principal, actually be starting year nine this year. It's been a long time in Spring Grove, great time, 12th year um, here in, in the city of Spring Grove schools here. So a couple of things about AP Capstone Diploma Program. This is a program that you have to actually apply for and be selected to have at the high school setting. I believe when we got the program a couple of years ago, we were in the 20th as far as the 22nd, 23rd school to have it, it's up to 53 out of about approximately, I would say, 1,000 high schools in the state of Ohio. Um, so they are very selective with the process of the AP Capstone Diploma Program. The program consists of two classes, AP Seminar, which is the first class that you take in the program, and AP Research, which was the second year. Um, what it offers the students is two different avenues. You can get an AP Capstone Certificate, by taking both seminar research and scoring a three or higher on the AP exam. Or you can also earn an AP capstone diploma, which at graduation is where they're wearing the blue and green cords. In order to get the capstone diploma, you have to do the research and seminar certificate piece, but then also take four additional AP courses to score a three or higher on those as well. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over here in a few minutes to Mrs. Dodd and Ms. Llewellyn talk about the program. But before I do that, I just wanna thank our students that we have here tonight. It is a very intense, um, Ms. Blight, I know Ms. Roger, you have been here for some of the presentations they've done. It's very intense and just very impressive with the work that they do with their project, not just with seminar, but also with the research, how individual based it is, but yet they've taken a lot of collaboration and feedback from their peers within that process. Um, before we turn over to the kids, though, I also want to really, I want to thank Mr. Dodd and Mr. Well. They spent hours with this program. And if you come up here on a weekend, on a Saturday or Sunday, oftentimes they are in here in the Ms. Llewellyn's classroom working on AP capstone um, requirements, classes, things they have to do in order to have the credentials to teach this course. And you can't find two better teachers that are student-centered and that will do anything they can to meet the needs of our kids to teach this course. So I want to thank them um, before we turn over to them. So, Ms. Dodd, Ms. Llewellyn, it's all yours. Oh, yes, 
and this is our, our two years basically of very strange school. So just the fact that they were taking this course at that time, and then not only did all 10 of them pass seminar, all six of them passed research and did very well, and we are very, very, very proud of them. So we want to give them an opportunity just to say a little bit about what they did. Um, so you want to go in alphabetical order? Let's go over it. Oh! <laughs>
figure out, I had to make my own arrows, so I had to figure out how to make arrows uh, after I was given uh, different arrow parts. Um, so there's like a lot of moving parts there, and I found the importance of talking with experts and getting their opinions, because uh, without getting help from experts, I would never have gotten um, half the things I would, I would have gotten, and uh, it would have been a much harder research project altogether. All right, up next. Hey, my name is Jacob Malik. I'll be going to the Ohio State University next for this month. And um, I did my research project over mental computation and mental math. Specifically, I wanted to see if you could estimate truth values using a very specific method called um, common chlorine series, which is something we learned in calculus. To achieve this, I conducted experiments with real students at the high school over the course of about a month. I gave some chlorine series to calculate, some nothing to just guess, and see if those with the series and if the method did better than those who did not. I to see if it was a way to substitute using calculus as a reference for these trig values. Unfortunately, I found inconclusive methods. Um, but although my research project didn't really provide answers I wanted to, I thought the class and the, the class itself was a really wonderful experience. It really synthesized different parts of high school and different classes you see. I'm the type of person who, when you get to use something, I see its value. I used my math class, my idea came from after taking calculus in the high school. Um, that was a foundation of my research project. That was really cool to get to incorporate that into something I really wanted to do myself. I used statistics in the research papers and in my experiments. I had to see if something was statistically significant to make changes then something, so I was able to use statistics in this class. This class not only uh, teaches you unique abilities or unique skills, such as doing a literature review or performing research, but it also gives you an opportunity to use other skills from other classes, and I thought that was a really, really cool thing. All right, let's do that. <laughs> well, my name is Alex Shell, and in September I will be going to the Savannah College of Art and Design with a dual major in sequential art and dramatic writing. Um, my, my research was based off of comic books, a very passionate um, hobby of mine. And I looked at a piracy website and looked at its viewership to see the trends and analyze the trends that you could see in regards to the piracy readership that you would see on the websites rather than what was normal, normally paid for when you look at sales and compare different factors like characters, franchises, um, sales, like rankings, and then really put into perspective what kind of like audience looks at these books compared to a normal audience. And I didn't find anything really too jarring either, although my evidence was, say, more, um, what's the word, significant than others when it comes to it, as piracy audiences tend to look towards what is normally popular when you look at what is paid for. So a regular audience has a higher rate of piracy audience. And what I learned most from this program was time management. I personally am very bad at time management. But this class kind of forced me to learn some time management. And it was also a very enjoyable experience. And like Jacob said, it was very cool to do something that I enjoyed doing and looking at stuff that I felt very passionate about while well, utilizing different school or different skills from around my school years here at Spring Group. I think one thing before you guys ask a couple questions that you notice is student choice. We talked about our student choice in education, how impactful student choice is, and just the motivation, I would say, just the, the laser focus that kids tend to commit to something when they are choosing what they're going to be researching or working on. And so when you listen to that, actually, you see that's a big theme of what they're able to pick something that they are interested in. So I think that's something that's kind of interesting for them now. So anything else from the students, Mrs. Dowd, as well? Do you have any questions? Any questions? I know we had a board member who came to some of our um, poster, poster presentations because uh, it's an interesting program because Ms. Llewellyn and I cannot give direct feedback to the kids. So it is very much a peer review kind of class that the students really depend on each other to help each other out. And um, they work very well. And Megan was very tolerant because Megan was the only girl <laughs> in the class. Um, there was another young man, another young lady. Um, the young lady took it as an independent study, and our other young man is not here. But um, Megan fared very well up against. Um, I was going to mention exactly what Mr. Martin did was just 
you guys are a perfect example of when we let students explore things that really interest them. First off, you're way smarter than I am. <laughs> Some of those words, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Like, you sound really smart. Clearly, you know what you're talking about. And it's just exciting to see what you did with it of something that really interested you. And hopefully, you will take these ideas and and take the concepts to college with you and find things that you're really passionate about when you have those opportunities. Because there are certain classes, of course, that we have to take, but there's other opportunities that you really can find your passion. And that's when you go and find a job in life. You want to find something that fills your bucket and you're passionate about. It's not just you're doing it every day and you hate what you're doing. And it was just neat to hear you guys all present totally different things, but super awesome things that you were passionate about. Were you able to use those on your college applications? Like, did you, was there, were there ways to incorporate that in? Uh, I like, obviously, put that I had, like, well, was on track to graduate with an AP capstone diploma, but now I'm finding out, like, not a lot of people know about this. I was, like, uh, been emailing, like, my advisors and stuff, and, like, the head of the education department at OU, and, like, People are like, what is that? Like, I've never heard about it. And I'm like explaining to them, they're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like, tell me more about it. So like, I'm kind of, I feel like it's still very new to people. So it's kind of cool to like introduce it to people and talk about it more and everyone seems interested. You guys did a great job presenting. I would never have guessed that you were shy. So <laughs> yeah. kudos to all of you. You presented incredibly well. I love hearing that this is really what life is when things don't turn out like we thought it would, but you all came back and shared with us what you learned from it, even though there wasn't a significant finding, but yet you were able to figure out something to learn from it, which is awesome, which is awesome. That's all that I have. Okay, but, you know, congratulations to all of you. You know, I think that's a great example of, you know, pushing yourselves above what you had to do. Certainly that's not a high school requirement. And, um, you know, I, I would, encourage you to keep doing that your whole life because that's really what you know makes people excel in life and be successful is, is that willingness to go above and beyond um, you know whether it's school work home anywhere that's that's really important um, the only other thing that kind of struck me I don't know if you guys had talked about this beforehand but you know three I think three out of the four of you mentioned you know one of the biggest impacts you learned was something that I don't think you were probably taking a course for right you talked about public speaking, you talked about logistics, you talked about time management. Um, you know, uh, I'm guessing you probably didn't go into this course thinking you were going to learn that, but, um, you know, serendipitously, you guys learned new skills. So, good job. That's great. And again, keep, keep at it. Hold on. Thank you for representing us. Yeah, absolutely. I had the pleasure of, of seeing uh, some of their presentations along the way, and you guys have uh, hit on the things that I observed as well. And it was just it was um, really inspiring to see how you each adapted to the challenges that popped up. Because I know things did not go exactly as, as you had planned. And, and you know, whether it was uh, securing arrowheads or recruiting students to, to do the, the, the computational uh, the math stuff, it just, I know there were lots of challenges along the way. Um, and it was just really cool to see how you guys overcame those and how you were able to adapt. And uh, I hope that I'm able to participate again uh, in the coming school year because I really enjoyed having the chance to, uh, to, to get to see all these uh, as they progress. And so, um, you know, I just also want to accept my thanks to Mrs. Llewellyn and Mrs. Dobber for just your support of this program and just creating an environment for our students where they can follow their passions and, and uh, learn these very valuable skills that are going to serve them, not just in their academic lives, but just in their future professional lives as well. So uh, thank you guys for, for all the work you've done with this program and congratulations to all of you and best of luck um, as you continue your studies. It's pretty impressive to hear what you guys are, are doing. I know you're going to make us all proud. So thank you. I would like to add this back. We never know what they're talking about either. So. <laughs> <laughs> what? That sounded good to me. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that. Thank you guys very thank much. You. Bridget. Okay.
Legislation has allowed for actually a two-year extension of this through House, House Bill uh, 583. So the resolution that we'll put before you is for this year and for next year. Uh, just as kind of a side note, you know, our office does work with the consortium to bring subs in, and, and these are items that we talk to them about that we track. Um, you know, just because the training is less, we want to make sure that we are putting competent adults in front of our kids to make sure that they are safe. Uh, so I know that my office does track who's in schools and, and what their commitments are. So we'll I appreciate you sharing that because I know there has been a few questions out there about that and I think it's good to hear that it's not just grabbing anybody off the street that there still is oversight and the principals are watchful and recognizing if there's an issue it will be addressed but it's just we're trying to help the teachers be able to do what and not be pulled out of their plan time so thank you for recognizing and being cognizant of what's happening with all of the subs. All right, item 3.3 is a memorandum of understanding uh, for our CPI trainers. So as you may know, uh, CPI is a requirement for schools. Uh, I believe, and Sarah can certainly clarify, I think we have two trainers currently. Um, and they've been navigating training for teachers throughout the district. Uh, this allows us to, to help them uh, to pay them for the time that they spend training because it is a pretty rigorous training, whether it's a refresher or whether it's the initial training that they've got to go through. Uh, so this allows um, our teachers to be compensated for that work that they've been doing. Can you just share a little bit? I, I ask an email, but just for anybody else that's out here, can you just share a little bit about what CPI is? Yeah, CPI. Sarah, I don't know if you want to jump in. <laughs> I mean, I can talk about it. I know it's Crisis Prevention Inter Intervention. It is. It's through the uh, Crisis Prevention Institute is the company, um, which is why we call it CPI, but it's actually nonviolent crisis response training. Um, the training 
is partially for restraint and seclusion. That's what it's known as, but it, that really is a very minimal part of the training. The training really focuses on intervening early, proactive strategies, de-escalation strategies when students begin to escalate emotionally, um, so trying to avoid the restraint and seclusion piece is the majority of the training, um, but then they do learn direct hands-on approaches when we do need to, to put hands on a student for, for safety purposes. Um, we have trained, that has been our go-to training in this district for at least 20 years, um, but we have always trained a minimal number of students, like at, or um, staff, a handful in each building. CPI requires training every three years um, per CPI, but House Bill 318, which is the PDIS, um, part of that was restraint and seclusion, requires every building to have the escalation teams, and the, the law requires training annually. So even though CPI says you only need it every three years, Ohio says you need it every year, whatever training program you pick, you have to do annually. So that's part of this also, is our trainers have done one refresher training a year for about 10 staff, and we are moving to 70 staff members a year in order to accommodate this new house bill. So we need to compensate them for that time. That answered my other question, was how this connected with PBIS. Yeah, so thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. Other comments or questions? I will say that my wife works for a children's hospital, and they have a very similar process that they have to go through yearly. And um, my wife is four foot eleven. And she can take me down. So, <laughs> it's, it's impressive. I mean, just like knowing exactly how to like move and stuff. It is very impressive. Yeah, to and to do it safely. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The key. Not hurting me, but yeah. I can't move. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. Three point four is another MOU. Um, this is to increase uh, pay for home instructors. Uh, so this is a little bit of an update on language that's been around for us in the past. We had old contract language that were called home tutors. Uh, the responsibilities really have changed for our homebound instructors at this point. Uh, they are delivering specially designed instruction to our students with special needs. Uh, and additionally, it's, it's difficult sometimes to find people who are willing to do the home instruction. So this uh, will hopefully increase interest in this position, um, as well as start to match the pay with some of the responsibilities that just aren't reflected in the current contract.
is it actually speaks speaks to a section on work life balance. And you know, from what I'm hearing, there were there were some times simply on this section that the principals maybe want an additional time with their assistants. So they they've gotten additional days as you guys probably know over the year. And then as we we work to try and maintain this work life balance, providing compensation through paid holidays is I think a nice touch by the district to do as well. So I think this is a really nice balance for that. Uh, but that handbook is uh, very comprehensive to a lot of, of what goes on in our work. So. Questions or comments on 3.5? Um, I know we said that this was cost neutral, but with it being essentially six less work days, and the fact that our practice over the years is typically to give additional hours where needed, is that going to happen? Add further additional hours, do we think? Yes, yeah, so it was very much um, discussed at the administrator. You, you, you need to get your job done in this. Got it. Okay. So it would be That's great. an extreme circumstance that could be in it for the first time. <laughs> 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 are excellent novels and the choices that our teachers have made I'm very impressed with as they address diversity, adversity, multiculturalism, and building relationships. Any questions? Okay, my next one is a textbook adoption request for our AP Environmental Science <coughs> course. This may sound familiar as we did a textbook adoption for environmental science previously, which is our non-AP level course. So we've added two environmental science courses within the last couple of years. And we're very pleased that this is an area in which our students are interested and want to learn more within the science department. So this is uh, for one class set of uh, textbooks for our AP course. We do have uh, 21 youngsters signed up for that for the school year. Question. Three, seven. And lastly, 3.8 is our Microsoft Office Renewal. This is a one-year renewal that we do each year, and you'll see that it is um, educational pricing, so this is much less than what we would see in an office or business center. Just because it's the cheapest doesn't necessarily mean it's the best 
the best choice. And so it was really neat to see the different pieces that you're looking at. So thank you for sharing that piece with us. Thank you. Which seemed to work out good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anything else on that? Okay. Uh, moving on to bus stops. Uh, this is something that's required annually by the Board of Education, so we're bringing the uh, bus stops to you for approval this evening as well. Uh, with the lunch prices, uh, we did review the lunch prices. Uh, Kathy Ford does a tremendous job in nutrition. Uh, she looked at her commodity pricing, although some commodity pricing is going up. Uh, she runs a very good organization department and makes, making sure that the revenues stay where they need to be. Uh, with that, uh, she came back and proposed for students not to be increased in any lunch prices uh, for this coming school year. Uh, that will maintain consistency over the last five years. So there is no lunch increases for the school year. back yes to requiring the, the applications to be completed and to evaluate whether they're free or reduced and the qualification so. and then uh, with item uh, 3.12 this is an MOU uh, with the SEDA with regards to our head cooks uh, once again Kathy did an analysis and review and uh, looked at our current employees and trying to a recruit and hire and be retained uh, once they are here and as part of that process we recognized that we needed to increase our head cook prices just or, or our showers just a little bit more uh, to stay competitive and uh, Kathy really feels that this is going to be a uh, real positive uh, for her area and hopefully we can retain uh, those that are on staff comments or questions my only question with that we can do an MOU in the middle of our contract and not cause issues with other people that are under that contract or are they a separate contract they're under the same agreement uh, but this is for right. all course head cooks are receiving some type of an increase and through that discussion with the union um, officials they agreed that this would be a positive for the so is, is transportation under the same contract though? yes but they're okay that we do this for the head cooks and not for the other different areas. That's that's why we bring in the union to have that discussion. Yes. And okay. uh, gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yeah, questions, comments? All right. Thank you. I don't believe we have any community reports, do we? Okay. Any other business? session then to the state's it's financial report. Yes. Um, the first item I have for you guys tonight is our June 22 financial reports. I know that seems like it's many months ago, but um, to kind of give you a recap, um, obviously the detailed financial reports are on more docs for your review. Um, I also included an end of the year um, financial review of our general fund and our ESSER funds and our permanent improvement funds. Um, just to give you a few highlights from that general fund um, revenue came in at just over 58.2 million for the year, which was $35,000 um, over estimates, so it was good to get a little bit more revenue. Um, that was mainly due to some year-end enrollment adjustments um, on our foundation, as well as um, we submitted additional catastrophic cost applications this year, and we did receive additional reimbursements for that. Um, on our expense side, um, our expenses came in at just over 58 million as well,
just real quick. Um, have we heard anything on the pipeline situation? Is any updates on that? Um, they were supposed to be meeting today, and okay. so I sent an email to, to ask for if I could get a recap of how we do it.
responded to on the personnel report. Um, thank Jen Bogey. She has been a huge contributor at the high school and helped with CCP. And I reached out to her. I said, oh, no, where are you going? And she says she's just taking a pause to enjoy her season of parenthood. But um, a huge loss for our district just because she, and she still bleeds blue, she will still be around, but um, just another great contributor to our district. And hopefully she'll be back someday. So, yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Mr. President, members of the board, I bring a uh, request for approval for Microsoft Office renewal, approval of four novels, and approval of our AP environmental text. Okay. Is there a motion to approve item 7.4, which is the approval of item 7.1 through 7.3? So moved. Second. Is there a motion to approve item 7.4? Yes, we bring to you uh, the uh, topic of the 8.1 approval of contract with Peck Hanford Briggs for the Mechanical Services Agreement. Uh, item 8.2, approval of bus stops for the 22-23 school year. And item 8.3, approval of 22-23 school lunch prices. Item 8.4, approval of the MOU for the head cooks. Five is the approval of items 8.13 and 4. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Question and discussion. I just have one question. Yeah. Do the bus stops pretty much stay the same? Yes. Okay. Yeah, pretty consistent. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. 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 Members of the board, the only item that we have is, um, is a co transportation contract for this school year, and this, as of this moment in time, should finalize all of our transportation for this, at least to start of the year. So. All right, is there a motion to approve item 9.1? So moved. Second. Discussion or questions? Okay, uh, yes. Balaji? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. I want to start off with thanking for people that have been around you know about this but for newer people <laughs> Mrs. Stacy has been advocating for our pipeline for years and years and years and as it came up tonight I just added it because I just want to thank you for continuing you are a leader in that effort and many districts will benefit if if we're able to to make it to make the change that needs to happen but I just want to thank you for that because I know that you put a lot of time into that um, and there's different things that come up on on social media and it's been exciting to see all your work in the buildings and on the grounds over the summer um, the tennis courts I mean those all that whole area over there looks brand new it's just there's such a freshness in so many different areas in the building so thank you and your crew you've done a great great job over the summer um, the sensory garden I think this is something that many times there's initiatives that parents or teachers or PTOs whatever have and then it kind of dies this group of teachers that started the sensory garden are so passionate and then the volunteers that come alongside them to keep that alive and raising money to bring in new things and when I went last week to help I was just shocked it because I hadn't been for a while and all the new things and it is just in absolute amazing amazing shape and so to think about not just our special needs children all children <laughs> that are at Clear Creek benefit from that so I just want to thank those people that are helpful, that, that are in charge of. There's, I think, three main teachers there that spearhead that initiative. And just to keep it as vibrant, anybody who's been around for a while has seen the weeds up to there at different times where there's been a great idea and then it's kind of died. So I just think it's such a neat thing for those teachers and students. 
Um, I interrupt. I think our next speaker will actually be here. Yeah. So. Oh. It's a big field trip. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Super exciting. That's great to hear. Um, and then to see the hard work of our band, the amount of time that they have put in, and then the athletic teams. You know, I just think this is why we do what we do on top of the academics of our truly our whole school experience. And I was talking to a coach's wife this morning, and <laughs> the amount of hours that our coaches put in to for our students, and it's not just into the sports, it is into developing them as individuals. And it just makes me step back and appreciate what we have here in Springboro. And it, it is going to be what's happening in these halls, but it's way more than that. And um, it's just exciting to, to start the new year and to talk to some of the teachers that are truly excited to start this year and ready for some freshness and to be getting further and further away from COVID and to getting back to normalcy like it, it was back in I guess 2019. So those are my things around the district. And um, I just wanted to, I know we've got some that are um, that are interested in the board seat. It was very exciting to me that we had 11 people interested. This is a pretty awesome seat. We do some pretty exciting things, but um, to have that much interest is, it says a lot that there's a lot of people that want to invest in our district. And I appreciate that. Um, and I, um, I know that we're committed, and Mr. Stuckey, um, who was able to be there tonight, is we're all committed to really doing the best that we can do to make sure that we ensure a quality board and um, a team that we work together well to move our district forward and to support the two at the end of the table to really um, take us to that next level. I just think we're at a really, really exciting place. And that's what Charles, when we talked to him, that was what he wanted to make sure that it was communicated. We also have a new superintendent at the Career Center and that it wasn't at all a decision made because of the two superintendents. It's that he felt like he was able to step back because we, it is in such good hands. <laughs> so, um, and it is, it is an exciting time because I do feel like both at the Career Center with Mr. King, if anybody has students there, he's amazing, and replacing the um, Mr. Smith retired, and um, both great superintendents. Um, we've got some great things ahead for the Career Center, and the same thing with Ms. With Ms. Hester already. Um, you've seen, you know, at, bus, at the Bus Beginnings, is that what it's called? Bus Beginnings, um, out here meeting our littlest um, kiddos coming into school, and it's just, I think there's some some exciting days ahead so thank you for all you've done so far I think we've got some exciting exciting days ahead that's it okay. yeah uh, I guess this is our last technically not our last but actually our last board meeting until we start so how time is well um, but you know I, I share and agree with everything Ms. Babb said um, there's definitely like the buzz back in the community again because Everybody's excited to send their kids back. Um, <laughs> really uh, but you know, yeah, all the activities are ramping up. You just place a lot with activity, and it wouldn't happen without everyone that works here. And you know, bust their rear ends. You know, really, 12 months a year. Let's be honest, right? Like it's there's always something going on in our district, and there's always willing and you know great representatives in our district to help. So that's amazing. Um, so yeah, thank you to everyone that applied to the board seat. Um, yeah, that's, um, I'm not sure anyone that's got to a board meeting can see how exciting and fun it is. But in, you know, in all seriousness, it's a commitment. And you know, the fact that folks are willing to step forward and you know, um, commit to helping us. So that's, that's great. And um, you know, I know Mr. Anderson would share the excitement that there's a lot of people so that's that's fantastic. So um, I, I don't think we have that last time. So um, so that's that's wonderful. And then again, I I, I do want to say that you know again as we kick off our school year, I'm just thrilled to have Ms. Hester, Ms. Stacy at the helm. I think we're just going to have a tremendous year, and we've got a just top-notch leadership team and your communications. Been 
been on point all summer, and then Ms. Pat, you, you mentioned that in emails. I mean, it's just, I'm really, really excited about what we're going, and the speed that, that you're getting us there, so thank you for what you are looking forward to the school year. So thanks. All right, well, you guys have covered everything, and, uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll reiterate uh, just what we said earlier. Charles for his service, but I too am excited to be on 11 and so we're here this evening. Look forward to getting to meet those of you that I don't know and, and talk to you about the, uh, the opportunity. So uh, I do think it speaks volumes when we have so many people that are interested in, uh, in stepping into uh, the district. So thank you. Um, and again, thank you to Mr. Anderson for, for all his service. Um, I know we again, already said it, but uh, thank you again to um, our, our students that came. I think it's, it's the nice part about, you know, it's the other benefit of getting back into the school year is that we get to start having students come to the meetings again and hear about the different things that are happening in the district. Um, to miss that for the summer, so uh, it's, it's good to have them uh, back here, but we will catch them before they all head off to, uh, to college. But, uh, but just again, thank you for uh, the presentation and the work that you've done with those of research students. Um, it was certainly very impressive. I'd also extend my thanks to all of the, a lot of donations this evening, and just another way that the community is demonstrating its support for the district, and so I just want to extend my thanks there. And, um, as Mrs. Babb and Mr. Gibbs both hit on, and this is a busy, hectic time of year um, for our families and, and for our staff and our teachers and our administrators, and just, um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into uh, preparing uh, to welcome our children back and just and my appreciation for uh, all of that uh, that hard work to get ready for the upcoming school year. And I'm sure Mr. Good's excited that uh, this is going to be a good one. I hope we're not jinxing it, um, that uh, we don't run into any global pandemics uh, and whatnot. But uh, no, I really do think we're set up for success and just appreciate all of the, uh, the hard work that, that people have done to, uh, to get us ready for an exciting, another exciting school year. Anything else you want to add? Okay. That um, item 11.1 uh, is to move into executive session to consider the employment or compensation of a public employee or official for the purpose of the evaluation of the treasurer uh, and in conferences with the board's attorney to discuss matters which are the subject of pending or imminent court action. Is there a motion to so moved. Second. Discussion question. Just a reminder that. It Discussing the executive session should remain confidential. Yes. 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 All right. With that, we will move to executive session. There will be no action uh, following that. 